Hey, have you heard that Docker is now available on value series NAS like DS223, DS423, maybe upcoming DS124 and other Realtek based NASes? These are good news because now you can spend so much less to be able to do things like crash plan, private backups. Instead of paying business rates, you can just pay uh, home user rates, which is much lower. You can set up home automation, you can install your Plex. You can set up your unified controller if you wish so. So in this video, we're gonna go through what Docker is, how to set up your first Docker, how to configure it, how to understand what all this code and commands mean. So we're gonna try to simplify this and show you how to set this up as a beginner. So I'm gonna zoom out now and gonna show you, share, share my screen and show you how to actually do this. Docker is an open source platform created around 10 years ago. It's a home for containers, agile little powerhouses that encapsulate everything your application needs to run seamlessly. That could be code, libraries, tools, dependencies, you name it. No more need for bulky virtual machines anymore. Docker containers share the host machine's uh, operating system kernel, making them really fast and resource friendly. They can boot up in seconds. With Docker, creating, deploying and managing containers become so easy on any platform. It's all about consistency. Your applications run flawlessly on any machine with Docker installed. Docker follows a slick client-server architecture. The Docker client can be operated via command line or fancy graphical user interface. It communicates with Docker daemon which handles your containers. To work this magic, Docker relies on images, these nifty read-only templates that come with everything your container needs from code to config. Think of them as snapshots of a container's file system. You can share those images so easily. Containers are where the action really happens. They are live breathing instances of Docker images. You can start, stop, restart or delete containers with a single click of a command or command if you want to. Is there something like an app store? Yes, there is. Go to Docker Hub and you will find a list of all of the apps available or you can go to registry in container manager and you'll see the same thing. Here's, um, you can see rating, how many pills there have been happening and things like that. So you can go through and check. So there are a few must have containers. I would say very popular containers people choose. So PE alert, one of the options crash plan for backups you can back up your NAS you can do handbrake for converting videos it's also handy and another one which people choose is make MKVs transcoding videos into MKV file format so it can be played on various devices open hub for your smart home you can make things smart you can do Grafana to display your logs or your server settings, performance. There are a few things like Black Blaze, so you could have a private backup and do not pay business rates. You can also s install Unify to control what's going on in your network, act as firewall. Some people go for J River, old school player, it's also a good option. People choose that. Also Jellyfin if you want to record your IPTV or simply transcode. So what it all means, you'll need to understand that there's a basic Docker command. This is how you will find it in SSH, the volumes and the variables for volume and variables for general things like ports, time zones. So dash V, you'll set some sort of variable where if you want to link this location to your Docker, usually we'll keep it inside the Docker folder, but you can do it even outside the Docker. But dash we have your unique path. It's always going to be different. With environment variables, you can keep these the same. Usually it's going to give you a port number you could use and, and things like that. The additional things like host user um, ID or group ID. If you want to improve your security, folder security, access rights, things like that, you could sometimes you can have unique 
variables like this as well. So there's a basic example for like stacking, like creating projects. So you have, you find it in this form again, pay attention on volumes. This is always going to be different for each NAS. So now we're going to set up our first container. So you need to install container manager if you have DSM 7.2. So this is the layout, you get overview projects and the projects. This is the place you can also call it stacks where you can just paste all this script in there and change your volume variables and that's all, all it takes. You can copy that before you do that check the volume variables, create these folders. So in this case, go to Docker, create Jellyfin folder, create those subfolders. Then you can go project, create, give some sort of name for your project. The path is gonna be Docker, Jellyfin, the folder you just created. The source, you can do upload, or you can create your own. We're gonna be creating our own one. So in instead of the script we're going to be pasting it we could also upload that script that will be the other option so you sometimes you can share that script with others but um, in our case we are going to be the only ones using this script so for that reason we're going to go for create docker option so this is the box we can paste that script in and then alter a few bits in there so you can go through go through things like version so it identifies the version then the jellyfin word image is are taken from the location the version of the image the image which is going to be turned into container so that you can give it a name if you want to our environment variables user id don't need to use them if you want to keep default uh, variables or you can as I said before, you can set those variables up. It's up to you. Uh, you can set the time zone if you want. You can add additional variables. Anything to do with optional, you can just get rid of it. Don't need it unless you know what you're doing. Volume variables, as I said, this is always different. Most of the time is different because it's the folder structure you have. This is what you're going to use in these so let's change these to our volume one, our Docker folder, Jellyfin folder, and then semicolon, and then you give internal that name like config and movies. This is mean. This means how this location will be seen internally inside the Docker. So the first bit is physical. These two folders. If you haven't created, create them. Put some files in there, <coughs> and uh, then you can move on to ports. Can, I would recommend leaving the ports as they are. Anything optional, you can delete and add network mode host. This can sometimes break or make things. And then just go further, click next, and it's going to do everything like pulling the image, creating and configuring the container, and starting it. So everything in one go, you don't need to manually go step by step. Everything is done using that script. So you can see it's now built. Exit code zero, no errors. That means you're ready to access your container. So you can change the port number, we, what we um, set in that script. You change that, reload the page, choose the host mode as a network, and that should load this container up. And you can see Jellyfin is all operational and ready for you to use. You can connect, you can configure it, it's up to you. But we're not going to go deeper in this since this is not the subject about Jellyfin. We're just looking at uh, how to install it. So this is what happened actually in uh, behind the scenes if you wanted to install this Docker manually. So you can use PI Alert as an example this time. You can go through the Docker page to see what variables are required so compulsory ones and uh, what variables you may need as port, time zones and again pay attention on your location of your folder where actually your docker folder exists in volume 1 probably in your case again and so on. 
port we're going to keep as it is. It's just simpler to to access your container when you finish doing that. So required, we, we need two folders, config and db. Without these folders, our container are not going to work. So we'll need to go to file manager, docker, and create a new folder. We're going to name it um, similar to this docker, so pi. It's up to you how you name them. But as long as you have all these folders required, you're, you're good to go. So internally, you need to call them pi alert config. So this is what you need to I'll stick with. So pi alert, that's in our other folder. So the image, we need to find that image in our registry. This is like app store per se. So we paste in the name of that alert and you should be able to find it. So all you need to do is select the one, click download, choose the latest version so it's not pulling the image. And now when it's pulled, we can actually run it. So when we run it, we need to add those variables. So those volume folders, we need to link them to the Docker. So earlier we created this PE folder, PI alert config and database. So we need to select one and select another one. These two folders from the script, if you forgot, how they were called, you can just have a look. Then we give them a virtual name, virtual location. Put link the other folder as well, which was database. Select, give it a virtual location for the Docker. Uh, make sure the bridge mode is changed to host mode. Unless you need specific configuration, but most of the time it's going to be host we need. And then just click next and done. That's it, and a container is created. You should now be able to access using that port. And there you go, PI alert, all running and ready to use. And again, we're not going to go too much in detail about this particular app. So what about Docker's that has no graphical interface? You'll need to see the output somehow in the command line or through the email or through the logs. These are the options for you how to see what's going on. So you can create a new project, give it a name again. For example, disk test in our case, set the location for the Docker, choose the source. We're going to be creating a Docker. So paste that script from the App Store per se page and run it. And then exit code zero means everything is OK. You can start using it. You can open that through the containers, go into logs, and you'll see output in your logs. If this Docker doesn't have graphical interface, it's going to throw output in into the logs. So this is how you can see the output, one of the options. Other option is opening a terminal. So this is kind of SSH mode, command line, but also that's in a way to see the output. And the last option is go to schedule our creation, choose a root as a username. Then um, you need to schedule it manually, let's say today or tomorrow, because you <coughs> you'll need to set your email address there and put the command, SSH command for this Docker to be run. First you need to pull and create Docker and then you can add this command. So it will be executed as an admin through the command line. So when you click run, you manually force it to be run and you will receive an email. So this is SSH command line version. Actually, what's happening behind the scenes, whatever we were doing before. So we need to use command sudo docker pull to pull the image. So it's going to download it. Then we need to, we can see all available images if you go sudo docker images and we can do run command to run and the docker using all the variables we were using manually before and you'll see the output straight away and 
you will have the notification of what's going on. So you can again see sudo docker images. You can use that command for looking at images that are downloaded. You can use docker uh, um, rmi to remove the docker. So this was a quick guide for beginners how to set up a docker. What is docker? What all these commands mean? What all variables mean? If you have any questions, you can always go to NAS Compares. There's a form to fill in right inside, or you can send us an email. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time.